Hello, everybody. Uh, we won't waste too much time. We'll start first while waiting for the others to enter. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, before we start, I'd like to give a brief introduction on what is Nest Space and also Nest Space Clubhouse, as you can see over here on the screen. So basically, um, Nest Space started off as a co-working space back in 2018. I think some of you have seen before and know before, I haven't been, been to our co-working space before. And as a space for startups to kickstart their businesses. And our goal is to help people search for that perfect work-life balance and also uh, when, when it comes to choosing a career and ensuring a fulfilling and happier life. Right, so um, welcome to our recently launched uh, Nest Space Clubhouse, as you can see on the screen over here, where it is a platform that aims to solve your problems and also empower your mind. As you can see, we're having a lot of uh, mind-building sessions, right? And uh, yeah, so bring your problems to us and we will try to provide a professional, provide a professional, right, to have a perspective to your problem. And do check out our classes to learn from industry experts careers, uh, career coaches, clinical psychologists, and even registered counsellors that provides insights on career tips, career goals, and even self-growth, all on, on our website at nestspace.my, as you can see at the bottom over here. So do visit nestspace.my as we have a lot of things there going, a lot of things going on there, and you can see quite a lot of uh, other sessions that we are having. Okay, so it's, uh, let's not waste too much time. I'll go straight in and invite our speaker, Kogi, to introduce herself. Yeah, take it away. Thank you, Him. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here with you all this evening. So my name is Kogi, Kogi Lavani, actually. So for short, it's Kogi. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Good Kids Malaysia, which is a social enterprise that provides mental health awareness program for school kids and B40 kids. And to support our work, we actually run a training company, corporate training company called Mind Movers, where we focus on mental health and well-being at workplace. So I am a HRDF certified trainer, and I have you know over five hundred hours of counselling uh, by now, and also more than fifteen years of coaching, guiding, and providing training. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. Back to you, him. Okay, thank you. Okay, so just to remind you all again, um, let me show the next slide. Just give me a minute. Okay, so if you all can scan this QR, this QR is actually for you to ask a question. Okay, it's, it's, it's a platform where you can ask a question anonymously in case you have any other questions. Don't worry, this QR will be shown throughout all the slides later as well. We can ask questions through, if you have any follow-up questions, uh, through this link, also through this QR. If you cannot, if you're unable to scan the QR, you can also go to slido.com over here and key in this number. Don't worry, again, the this, this slide will be presented at the bottom of the screen later. All right. And also, um, if you do not, or if you have trouble logging into the website, you can always PM me, as in him, on the chat. And if you're not too shy about your problem, you can just PM me and I will uh, direct, it, direct it towards the coach. Or even if you want to PM, so yeah, even PM the speaker, you can do it by yourself, all right? Yes, yes. So without um, wasting any time, we'll just go straight into the questions. Again, if you have any questions, just straight to the chat or straight to Slido over here. Okay. Yeah, so all these questions were actually taken from the form that was filled on event size. And we actually summarized the questions into simpler, uh, shorter words rather than a long words uh, to try to suit the needs or actually find the answer that you want. So just dive straight into the question. We go for the first one over here. All right. Um, how do I find intimacy in my relationship with my partner? Yeah, go ahead. Take it away. Okay. Thank you. Um, as what he mentioned just now, you know, if anyone has any questions in between while I'm explaining or right after I finish explaining, if you want to just follow up with whatever that I uh, asked, feel free to unmute and speak or to just message. Okay. The more interaction I get, the more all of us can learn from each other, actually. So how do I find intimacy in my relationship with my partner? The question is, do you know what is your intimacy requirement? Right? Uh, a lot of people, I think what we have an impression of intimacy is based on what we have seen around us, uh, mostly from movies. You know, all those uh, La La Land and... Um, the butterflies flying around. So that is what we perceive as intimacy, right? So intimacy comes in many different ways and uh, many different forms depending on the person, 
the first thing that you need to understand is love language. I think uh, what you can do is um, try to read out about love language. There are about uh, five different love languages uh, that you can find. One is um, some people like it when they are given words of affirmation. Some people are more attuned to physical touch. Some people enjoy receiving gifts. Uh, for some people, it is spending quality time. You know, it could be just sitting on the couch and watching Netflix together, and that can be intimacy. And for some people, it is actually act of service, doing something. You know, if your partner actually makes a cup of coffee for you in the morning, that is an act of intimacy. So find out first, what is your love language? How do you perceive love and what is intimacy for you? And then find out what about your partner. Sometimes there is a clash. Both of you all have different love languages. So what you need to do is understand each other's requirement in terms of love language and provide that for each other. And what facilitates this is, of course, good communication. Yeah, I hope I have uh, clarified that. Okay, we can go to the next one. Great. Yeah, I think I verified that. I think to, to find your intimacy, you have, you have to start first know what or how you want to define your intimacy. Yeah, that's a good yeah. way to Okay, next question. Go to one on the right over here. How do I find love? I think a lot of people, <laughs> I think it's a very straightforward question, but it's asked by many. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Okay, how do I find love? First of all, how do you find yourself? Are you loving yourself or not? Okay. A lot of people think that love life, love relationship is um, filling up a gap, finding my other half, finding my soulmate, right? So that concept, like I said just now, you know, it has been romanticized by a lot of novels and movies that you read that this is how a love, love relationship is supposed to be. So you go out looking for this love and try to fill in and emptiness that you have in yourself. But the fact is, you can never do that. Whatever that is lacking in you, it has to be identified by you and worked by you. And for that to happen, you need to learn how to love yourself. So what you need to now do is ask yourself, are you doing enough to love yourself first? Right? So when you love yourself, when you understand that, okay, this is what makes me happy, these are my values. Uh, these are uh, things that actually uh, drives me. This is my purpose. When you get all of this sorted, I, I tell you that this is uh, something that I tell all my clients. You, the love that you need will come looking for you. It is not magic. Yeah? It's not magic. It's, it's just about setting your mind right, setting your intentions right, and sorting yourself out first. A lot of people go out there and try to find someone else to fill in the gap that they have. But a love relationship is basically two people, two individuals who know themselves well, walking together hand in hand. So have you reached to that understanding first? When you have reached to that understanding, you know who you are, what you want, what are your values, and then whatever you are seeking for will seek you as well. Sounds very profound, is it? It's uh, I, I think I, I think got it. Yes. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. So sorry. Um. They said the QR cannot be scanned. Give me a minute. Okay. Okay. I think it's okay now. Can you see the QR? Full yes. Stuff? Yes. Okay. Great. Now. Yeah. Okay, great. Esther, the, the, the QR is there now. Okay, we've gone to the next question. Uh, this one, how do I confess love to someone? I think it's quite a, it's a very specific question, but yeah, how do I confess <laughs> to someone? Okay, uh, how do I confess love to someone? Confess it genuinely. How do you exactly feel about that person and what are you expecting from that person, right? Um, be honest. Be honest, absolutely honest, because uh, love doesn't happen when there's no honesty there. And don't think too much about um, what is the response going to be, right? The thing that holds us back is fear of rejection. It's not because, you know, you don't know how to love someone. It's not because you are not good enough, but the fear of rejection. 
a lot of us Asians, we grew up with the mentality of rejection means failure, mistakes means failure, right? So we need to unlearn that and change it to a perspective that rejection and mistakes are actually giving us an opportunity to learn. So let's say you confess your love to someone and that person says, um, sorry, I am actually not interested. I look at you as a friend, you know, uh, not really a romantic partner. So go back home. Okay, yeah, you will feel sad. You know, we are all humans. We are subject to these uh, emotions. So feel sad. Understand that this emotion is temporary. And then sit down and ask yourself, why do you think that person actually rejected? What could you have done better if you wanted that love to uh, be accepted? Did you actually give out wrong signals? Um, did, you, did you approach in a wrong way? Or was that person actually um, already dating someone and you didn't know, right? So there are so many possibilities. So take it as an opportunity to learn, okay? And maybe that person was not even a good match for you. And the, the other person would have been able to see, okay, my characteristics and your characteristics don't match. So maybe you couldn't see that and the other person saw it and said no, right? So there are so many possibilities. So do not hold back because of the fear of rejection. Go ahead and try. It's okay to fail. Learn from that failure, learn from your mistakes and come back stronger. Yeah. Um, do you think that people also feel that probably by them confessing, they would um, probably ruin the initial relationship that they initially have with that person or something? Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, that's a good point, Him. Thanks. So, a lot of people think that, oh, I already have a very good relationship with this person. Oh, I'm working with this person. I don't want to ruin that relationship. That's why I don't want to confess. Right? So, it all boils down to your communication. When you confess the love to someone, don't sound very creepy. La. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Be honest with your feelings, saying, I actually feel like, you know, uh, there's a little bit more interest that I would like to explore with you. I would like to spend more time getting to know you and I am actually attracted to you. Right? Uh, so make that clear and then tell that person that but I also respect your decision and your feelings. If you do not feel the same way, you know, we can continue being friends or colleagues as how it is. I assure you that things would not be awkward. That's all you need to do. Okay. If that person still wants to take it awkwardly, then of course it's beyond your control already. Mm. Right? It's not in your control anymore. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Um, the question over here on the right side, they said, we fight a lot and get back without discussing to solve it. How do we go ahead? I think it's it more is. of like sweeping the problem under the rug and then... Yes, yes. This is not a good strategy at all, right? Um, fighting is normal, okay? Because, like I said, two individuals who have uh, come across each other, but they both come from different backgrounds. Okay, your childhood, your journey to where you are now compared to your partner's journey, right? Both of y'all are carrying your own baggages. Both of y'all have, um, you know, your own traumas, your own life stories. And then you meet and you cross paths. So everything is going to blow out of proportion eventually when the butterflies and the sparkles die off. Typically within one year or even less than that, all the sparkles will you know, go off and you will start finding small, small faults in each other and you will start having arguments. So the thing about this is you need to communicate. Any relationship, not only romantic relationship, yeah, even in your, with your parents, siblings, friends, BFF, you know, colleagues, you need to communicate. Because if you don't communicate and find out, okay, why did we have an argument the other day? What was the root cause of it? Then the same argument is going to happen again and again. And one day you're going to get really frustrated. And there are chances of you feeling, you or your partner feeling that I want to walk out of this. And if, you, if it doesn't end up there, it is going to create stress 
that is going to affect your life in many other ways. It will affect your relationship with other people. It will affect your work. It will affect your mental health. Right? So if you ask me, you know, you need to sit down and discuss and understand um, non-violence communication. Okay, non-violence communication is very, very important to maintain a harmonious relationship, which means every time you have an argument, after you cool down, let all the emotions settle, sit down in solitude first before you confront or you, I wouldn't use the word confront because, you know, that is very, um, there is a, a very energy, strong energy shift there. Okay, we want to maintain a neutral energy level, so more of a discussion. Before you discuss with your partner, you sit down in solitude first and ask yourself, why did this happen? No judgments, okay? No personal evaluation. Get facts. Why did this happen? Did this happen because uh, both of us were very stressed and tired after work? Did, did this happen because of um, something that we're carrying from our past relationship? Okay, ask yourself and then understand the feelings. So word your sentences on how you feel about the situation. If your spouse is the one who messed up, right? Don't go and approach them and say, every time you mess up and this is how I feel, right? So instead of saying that, just tell them, whenever this, this action, you know, done by you, whenever you don't answer me, uh, immediately when I ask you something, this is how I feel. So it shifts the communication to you and how you feel. Okay? And then, communicate your needs. Because I feel this way, I get very anxious. I start overthinking. So what I need is you to clearly communicate with me what, what is causing this delay in you responding to me. That is your need. Okay, and make sure you request what you want in a proper, uh, amicable matter, a big sorry, amicable manner. All right. So this is non-violence communication. Try to practice this uh, whenever you have an argument. Like I said, find a solitude moment first. Calm down. Structure your sentences to focus on how you feel instead of putting the blame on the other person. I hope this will work for you. Okay, great. I'll go to the next one. Okay. Um, on the left side, bottom, what to do when my partner's parents don't approve of our 10-year relationship. I think mm. that's, that's a very long relationship as well. Yes, yes. I think uh, I did go through the whole text. Um, yeah. The person who submitted this, um, this is a very complex situation, right? Uh, and you are not in this alone. Your partner has to take an accountability over the relationship as well. This is not something that you alone can fix this. Right? Because it's a 10 years relationship. Have you guys communicated about the goal of the relationship? Where are you all heading? Are you all talking about getting committed? If you are, then both of you have to sit down and discuss how to move forward. Right? If, you're, if your par uh, partner's parents don't approve it, Okay, fine, but what does your partner feel about it? You know, so yes, parents' approval is important, but we are adults. Sometimes we can see what is lying ahead of us, okay, compared to what our parents can see. Parents have unrealistic expectations because they, they might have their own belief system and, you know, their own um, set of uh, preconceived notions. So... Uh, we can't change them, okay? We can't change them and you can't even force this upon them. But you need to clearly make a decision, like, you know, where is this relationship going? If this relationship is going to go into a commitment, then how can both of us make this work? Okay, maybe your partner needs to put his foot down, his or her foot down and say that, no, this is what I want and stand up for you. Right? If your partner is not able to do that, then this is a question that you want to ask yourself. 
how are you going? What do you want to do with this relationship? Because it's going to be constant struggle and are you ready for this battle? Right? I would strongly suggest that you actually meet a, a therapist to discuss this because I know this is a very big thing in a lot of people's life. You've invested 10 years, right? Um, it's not easy uh, for you to call the shots if you don't have the support from your partner. And from the um, what I read, it sounds like your partner is not that supportive. Okay. We go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. I think that was quite a heavy, a heavy yeah, question. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, but no worries. I hope um whoever asked this question managed to find a solution. Also, go find a solution like what Kogi suggested, lah. Right. Yeah, I strongly suggest to you know meet a therapist um uh, because this is something very heavy. Yeah. Okay, okay. Next one, the last one for this slide. That's another slide. Mm -hmm. Um, tips on long distance relationships. I think a lot of young, younger generations now, especially when you go overseas to study and all this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Again, long distance relationship is uh, it's challenging, but um, if you focus on like what I said earlier, right? Who you are, what your values are, what do you need? First, before going into the relationship, right? You don't expect the other person, your partner, compliment you in all ways okay so if you have your food on the ground first and then you're bringing someone else who's also grounded along with your journey um, a long distance relationship is is not that challenging okay uh, constant communication is a must because you need to have that that trust and when you don't meet each other physically you don't see each other physically, right? How do you build trust is via communication. So try to, you know, communicate as often as you can. But that doesn't mean, you know, in a day you have to call each other about 10, 20 times. Okay. If you can, every day, by the, by the time, you know, the day ends. If you can't, then a few days once will work as well, depending on both your uh, schedules. So constant communication is important. And um, try to do like, you know, uh, video calls if you can, because video calls actually allow you to at least see more of the body language and connect a little bit more. Okay. And when you understand each other's love language, let's say the other person's love language is, you know, receiving gifts um, or words of affirmation. So do this. Do these exercises of you know providing what the other person will actually find um, very romantic or find like they can connect to do that because even from a long distance you can actually take effort on you know sending gifts, uh, giving words of affirmation when when someone shares you know something that they've done for the day and if you feel like you know it's it's a great job then give that compliment, don't hold it back. Okay, have honest uh, communications, right? So yes, communication, try to understand each other's love language and the little, little effort that you make actually creates a, a big difference, right? Long distance relationship is definitely not easy, but once you have established the trust and the communication, I'm sure that you will be able to do this. Right, great. I want the next slide because actually I saw the slido as well. There's quite a lot of questions coming in from oh, there. Oh, okay. So, but it's okay. No, no, no problem. We just go through this as well. Just okay. five more here and then we'll go to the slide. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll start one over here. I want my partner to be more romantic and caring. He's always cool. What to do? Hold on, Kogi. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I think you muted me. Is it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. okay. Um, okay, here's the, the bitter truth here. Yeah? You cannot change a person unless the person wants to change. So if you're going to ask me what you can do, um, you, can, you can have an open conversation with your partner. Okay, say that this is your expectation. Okay, like I said, non-violence communication, right? Don't, don't attack your partner saying you are not romantic, you are not caring, you are so cold. No. Tell your partner, this is what I expect from you as a partner. 
or tell your partner that, okay, when you do these things, I feel loved. When you respond to me in this way, I feel like I am uh, cared for. So understand that language that you're going to use and attempt to make your partner to understand. Okay? And go in with an open mind to listen to what your partner has to say because your partner is probably going to say, I, I'm so sorry, I'm not a romantic person. Right? Which is fine. But tell your partner, okay, you're not a romantic person, but I'm going to give you tips on this is what you can do if, um, sorry, this is what you can do so that I feel more loved in this relationship. I feel more valued in this relationship. So that is the uh, thing that you can do. But again, as I'm saying, if your partner doesn't want to change, there's nothing much that you can do. Because a relationship doesn't, getting into a relationship doesn't mean it will change a person. This is a mistake that a lot of people do, saying that, oh, he will change after you get married. He will change after we get committed, after we get a kid. No, it doesn't work. Okay, which is why you need to work on yourself first before you expect the other person to come on board on this mission of relationship with you. Okay, okay. yeah. All right, great. Go on to the next one. Um, when do I know that I'm tolerating or taking advantage? Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, from a therapist's perspective, both are not good. In a relationship, you shouldn't be tolerating, you shouldn't be taking advantage you should be accepted or you should accept the person for whoever that person is. Ask yourself, what does being in love mean? Okay. Personally, for me, what does being in love means? You are accepting the person for who they are and you are going to tolerate all the nonsense that they're going to do. That is my perspective about being love, being in love, right? Because there's no, no other way around it. You have to accept that person if you want to live harmonious with that person. So if you don't accept, that's when the tolerating comes into picture. And you can only tolerate so much. Eventually, you will get burnt out. You'll get tired, exhausted. Okay? And being taken advantage. Um, so you know the difference is being taken advantage, you know you clearly don't have boundaries. Okay? You have not set boundaries. That means you don't know how to say no. Everything that, you know, someone asks you to do, you were like, yes, yes, okay, can. Okay, you probably take up too, many, too much compared to what capacity that you have. Okay, then you are going to get tired and burnt out. Okay, um, you need to also recognize, is there something that is making you feel guilty all the time? Which is why people take advantage of you and you say, just yes, yes, yes. Because if you don't do it, you're going to end up feeling guilty. Right, so these are the things that you know you can see the difference. If you're tolerating, you're just gonna get tired and and exhausted. But if you're being taken advantage, there's no clear boundaries there, and you're probably feeling guilty a lot of time. Or sometimes you even feel anxious when you are put in a situation because you don't want to make a decision and think that, oh no, I didn't do well enough. Oh no, you know I should have done more. Okay, and another thing you need to ask is, are you actually avoiding conflict? You don't want to have an honest conversation, which is why you're just tolerating and you're allowing yourself to be taken advantage. Okay? Uh, I think that's yeah. what you need to I figure out. Also, I think this also applies to not just like romantic relationships. I think just mm -hmm. any relationships in general, I think. Yes, yeah, yes. Or whoever. All right. Okay, we'll go to the next one. I get attached too easily. So when I get together with someone, I make them uncomfortable. Hoping to find a partner. <laughs> okay. Um, I can also relate to this because uh, I have been in this kind of unhealthy attachment before uh, in my past relationships. So uh, when I analyzed what happened was I realized that um, there was something in me that was lacking and it was needing attention. Right? So the moment I, I get into a relationship, and that person shows that attention and the love. So I am immediately attached to that person like a magnet and, and try to absorb every attention that a person gives. Okay. And if you analyze this deeper and deeper, you know, I did a lot of readings um, 
uh, scientific research papers on this, on uh, psychological effects. It actually comes from a uh, childhood background where you were not uh, growing up in a very conducive environment. Okay, maybe you didn't receive enough attention. We know that a lot of parents, you know, back then, maybe in the 80s and 90s, most of the parents were very busy working and trying to provide food on the table. So they didn't have enough time and they didn't have enough knowledge on how to uh, provide a safe space for the child and to make sure the child gets all the attention that they want. The emotional and mental needs were not met. So what was met was your basic needs, your education, your food, your shelter, all of that. Okay, but your emotional needs, probably we didn't get enough hugs and enough affirmation that, you know, you are good, you are enough, right? So because of this, which is why I said you need to work on yourself, right? So it's good that you have noticed this. That is the first step, okay? That's the first step of making a change to yourself. You've noticed that you are getting attached to easily. Now the next step is for you to ask yourself, where is this behavior coming from? Okay, the behavior of needing attachment, needing attention. What is something that from my childhood that I need to revisit and heal? Okay, once you have fixed that and then try getting into another relationship and see whether your partner still feels uncomfortable. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, move to the next one. Um, hold on. Yeah, we'll speed up a little bit. Just okay. a little bit so that we can sure. I'll try. live. Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, just last two for the slides, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we always hold grudges and it's brought up in fights and we fight all the time. What to do? Uh, always hold grudges. <laughs> so again, uh, non-violence communication. If you practice non-violence communication, I know it just sounds very, you know, meh, you know, what is this? No big deal. But really, uh, when you fight, you always are emotionally charged you are not responding, you are reacting. Whatever response that is supposed to come out is not coming out. Your brain goes into fight or flight mode because you are challenged or you're triggered. And what happens is you go into a past incident that was uncomfortable for you. Your body reacts in a certain way that is not conducive for an argument. So which is why every time you have fights, you need to take time off, cool down and think. What was the fact that caused this fight? You know, observe that and try to do it without any judgment. You need to understand both of you are in this together. Not one person is more superior than the other. Okay? And focus on what you need and request that clearly from your partner. Talk to your partner about nonviolence communication. Okay? I hope that will help. All right. Okay, we go for the last question on the slide. This is also a very complicated situation. But I <laughs> tackle this. Okay. Uh, my friend is attracted to another woman, but he still loves me. What do I do? Do you trust your boyfriend? That's my question to you. Okay. Do you trust him that he says that he still loves you? Okay. If you do trust him, then it's great. If you don't, then sit down and talk to him on how you feel about it. If you feel uncomfortable, Okay, him getting attracted to another woman is making you uncomfortable. Tell him, this is making me uncomfortable. How can we find a solution for this? It's normal for a lot of women to feel this because you feel like your boyfriend is not going to be there for you. He's going to leave you and go. So there is some amount of insecurity in you as well. Because the moment they see someone who's pretty and just attracted, he didn't say that he's in love with this person, he's attracted. Right, even you can see someone, some very good looking guy, and feel like, Wow, this guy is very good looking. Right, so first thing is make your, your feelings known how you feel about this. Second, ask yourself, Why are you feeling insecure? What is it that is making you feel like he's going to leave you and go, or you feel like the other woman is better than you? You feel like you are lacking in something. Okay, right, I'm done with this question. Great, this on the form. Uh, there are more complex questions coming from. The... Right, let's bring it on. Anyone has any comments? You know, please DM. I am also. I can see the chat box as well. Yeah. Okay. 
So if any further questions, you still can ask over here. The QR code is still here. Yeah. Let me just put it to full screen. Okay. Can, can you see, see on full screen? Yeah, 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 I can see it. Okay, great. So we'll just go for the first question over here. Hi, how can I communicate with my spouse? Sometimes he says that he can't change anymore. Take it or leave it. I think you tackled this, but probably you can reiterate Yeah, I, I can reiterate. So yeah. yes, you cannot change a person. Okay? You really cannot. If that is the package that you have accepted, then that is the package. So you need to learn how to live around it. Okay? Accept it. And maybe the way you are communicating is needing some improvement. Like I said, you know, use non-violence, focus on how it's making you feel and Communicate clearly what is your need. Okay. Um, and tell your spouse, you know, when your spouse says, take it or leave it, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel like you don't have any other option. So what is it that he actually wants? All right. And maybe you guys have been together for many years and there's no more spark, right? So um I saw a message from Sham. Okay. No problem. You're welcome, Sham. Okay. Uh, maybe you can find out what are the things that you can do together to rekindle the whole thing. Okay, find out common interests. Okay, take some time off, go somewhere together and discuss about this. Maybe sometimes when we're stuck in our daily routine, doing day in, day out stuff, it actually stops us from putting that extra effort for the other person. Okay, understand your love language, communicate clearly and take effort to do something together. All right? Yes. Next one. Okay, before I go to the next one, just a reminder, Um, we will still accept questions. Uh, if there's no time when you won't answer, but we'll follow up later. But if you, if you have any more questions, you can just scan and ask the question again. Again, it's anonymous. As you can see over here, we don't know who sent the question. So you can be as honest as you want and pour your heart out. Okay, we go on to the next question, which is here. Is there a best method to attract a girl's attention? Yes, the best method is be yourself. <laughs> That's all that I can say, you know, because they need to know what is going to be put on the plate is what they are getting. So just be yourself. No need to <laughs> impress in a very sophisticated way. Yeah. Okay, good. A very straightforward answer. I hope the person got it. Okay. Um, next one. How do I... Oh, there's total six questions here, by the way. This is the third one. Okay. How to bring joyfulness to a relationship if the spouse already lived 51 years single before and he can't get up from his comfort zone? Okay, so this is a bit complicated. Yeah. Okay, you are talking about someone who has lived on their own, been very independent, and they have a set way of life. So if you are accepting this person, you have to accept the way that person is. So you need to understand that love is not just about feelings. Yeah? It's practical ways of making a, a living together. So if that person is set in certain ways, you, you need to accept that and discuss what are the, the common things that you can do together and meet midway. That is the only thing that you can do uh, because I, I totally you know see this because I also you know have certain ways of doing things that i would not compromise when i am in a relationship yeah yeah so i make that clear before i get into a relationship so that you know the other person knows that okay if i am willing to accept this then i get into this relationship so i hope your partner actually made that clear but if not then you need to speak to your partner where can you meet midway what are the things that you can do together or what are your expectations that he can at least try to meet? Okay. Okay, great. All right, the next one. Also, there's a new question, yeah? So, the total seven questions. Now, I like that people are asking questions. Okay, great. Yeah, we go for the next one over here. How to get rid of anxiety if we want to decide to walk away? Not giving up, but more to do what myself will have be. But it gets me scared if this is a wrong step, yeah? I think a lot of people get scared or like, they don't know what to do, right? Afraid yeah. of that. Yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, this comes down again, you know, if you have established yourself as an individual, what is your interest? What makes you happy? What are your values? Um, so if you have established that, then you are a grounded person. You know your life is still going to go on with or without this person. So 
this is the trap that we we need to we need to change this mindset that we need to be in a relationship for us to be happy okay so relationship actually complements your life another person comes in and complements the way that your life is already there that is how you should perceive it and not accept it as an ultimate thing that is going to solve all your problems in your life no you are your only solution for all the problems someone else can help you towards the solution but they can't solve it for you even going and seeing a therapist you know the therapist is not going to solve your problem the therapist is going to guide you towards a solution so if you are feeling anxious about walking away okay talk to someone okay number one talk to someone uh, maybe a close friend or family member or if you think that is not helping go see a therapist Okay, I think Nespace has quite a number of therapists uh, working with them. So you can actually contact them and speak to someone because anxiety it can actually get quite serious if you don't manage it well. All right. Okay, uh, thank you for the shout out as well. Yes, Nespace do have a lot of therapists that can come to us and we'll try to find, we'll try to connect you with the suitable professional um, that could help you solve your issue. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the next one over here. Okay, how to communicate if the other person is not in the same energy and level? It seems like one way is repairing and the other just stays like that because in comfort zone. Yeah. Okay, not same energy level. Um, yeah, so this one, it comes back to effort. Okay, if you feel that your partner is not putting equal amount of effort as you are putting, right? that is basically causing the different energy level because sometimes you give more, your partner is not actually giving enough. So you feel like, oh, there's something off here, something not right. Okay. So that means there is a mismatch in expectations. You are probably expecting more than what your partner can give. So to communicate that, going back to the same thing I said earlier, non-violence communication. Okay. Get your facts. This is how you feel about the whole situation. Make your needs, um, out, put out your needs clearly, objectively. Don't try to, you know, guilt trip that person. Don't use passive aggressive mode, you know. Oh, because you didn't do this, I ended up, you know, doing that. You know, so don't do that kind of uh, blame gaming. And try to have a very objective, clear community. There's actually no magic to this, you know. It's, it's just... Simple, clear, basic, factual communication. Okay. All right, great. Next one. Um, the second last one, basically, two more. Okay. Um, is parents always right? I think this refers to the one. <laughs> or they are trying to give me the best by disliking my partner. Um, parents are not always right. Nobody is always right. Okay. When you want to know whether it's a right decision or not, you need to fact check. Okay. Before I make this decision, what are the facts that I need to check and what are the risks that I am taking? Every decision has its own risk. So you need to check your risk. This is where your critical thinking comes into picture. And you can only do critical thinking if you sort out your emotions first. When you are very emotionally charged, you are not able to think clearly. So if you need to make a, a decision like this, take some time off, You know, go talk to a friend or see a therapist, or you just go alone, you know, sit down somewhere near the forest or go to the beach or somewhere quiet and think for yourself. Put all the emotions, let all the emotions go out of you. Do some mindfulness, right? And then check your facts. Why are your parents disliking your partner? Is there something really wrong with your partner that you can see? Because you should know your partner better than your parents. Right? If you don't see any issue with your partner, then of course your parents are not right. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one is also about parents as well, this continuation. <laughs> so parents are not willing to talk or discuss about the next step of me securing a serious relationship as they do not like my partner. What can I do? Oh, I think it's a different perspective. Instead of um my partner's parents, it's more about my parents now. So. Yeah, it's my parents are not willing. Yeah. So um okay. Number one, you can have a conversation with your parents first and ask them, you know, okay, uh, I respect your decision, your opinion. Uh, I would like to understand why do you feel this way? Okay, 
I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want to do anything that you you dislike. But I also want to understand. So have a honest, open conversation with your parents. Sometimes it could be something very simple. Maybe they are just upset that you know you didn't introduce the partner earlier. Okay, or maybe your partner resembles someone who they didn't like in the past. It could be something very simple, right? When you have this conversation with your parents, and then you can see what is the cost. If your parents still refuse to, you know, cooperate, uh, refuse to discuss, right? Then you need to decide how important is this relationship for you? And how far are you willing to go with this relationship with or without your parents' uh, willingness? Because we are all adults, right? In the end, it's our life. So we need to take charge. We need to make the decision for ourselves. Okay? Yeah, that's right. Okay, just to let everyone know, this will be our last question that we'll be answering. No problem. You can still send your questions, but we'll answer it in, in a different session. But we'll still take in questions, so just do ask. But we'll just answer one last one for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last one over here. How to know that the relationship I have is a deeper real connection or just sexual connection? Okay, so sexual need is something that all of us humans have, right? So in an intimate relationship, we always expect that. But it is not the only thing. So when you think about the person, when you uh, miss that person, what are you thinking about exactly? Is it the sexual connection that you had previously? Or are you thinking about something that person said, the way the person responds to you, or some other gestures that the person has done to make you feel good, right? And when you are connecting with that person, uh, are you actually connecting in a deeper level? Are you talking about your your personal feelings, your values, uh, what are important to you, what are not important to you, what is the extent of sharing. The conversation that you have actually can give you a sign whether this is just a, a sexual attraction or you are actually emotionally and mentally connected, attracted to that person. Okay, great. So, Kogi, uh, could you probably just um, very quickly wrap up for us before I wrap up the whole session? Yes, yeah. sure. So, basically, you know, being in a romantic relationship, number one, like I said just now, you need to know yourself first. Okay? Understand yourself. What are the things that you are carrying into the relationship? Because you are not presenting yourself as who you are. You are your past, your traumas, your belief systems what your parents have instilled into you, all of that is carried into the relationship. If there are some things that you need to work on, some things that you need to change your belief system, work on that first before you commit to a relationship. And when you get into the relationship, understand what are you getting into and what are you going to put up with. That is very important. Like I said, for me, loving someone means the willingness to put up with all the nonsense that that person is going to give you throughout your life. Right, and the ability to be free as who you are. So these two things really is important. But that is, of course, for me, but you need to check who you are and what are you getting into. When, when you learn these two things, okay, it will be easier for you to facilitate through a relationship. Look at it as a, a, a task that you have. You know, Don't just put all the emotions into it and pour everything out. And second thing is practice non-violence communication. Okay, non-violence communication is something that we all should learn in school. Unfortunately, we don't. So you can Google it up, you know, what are the things to say, what are the things not to say, or if you need more guidance, you can actually come and refer to one of the therapists here in a space. All right, great. Okay, so before we end the session, uh, let me just promote a little bit on our website. Okay, so you can see over here, first I'm going to show it full screen. I'm going to show it over here. Uh, do follow us on our social medias. We have a TikTok, Instagram, and so Facebook. All is the same. It's nestspace.my. It's quite easy to remember. So nestspace.my. And it's also our website, which I like to show you all over now. Uh, can you give me a second? Let me load. Okay, so if you go, go on to our website, nestspace.my, you can come to this page. You can sign up for free and also get, get into the page. You can see a lot of different things, membership, gym for mine. But the one that I want to take note of is this clubhouse over here. So if you, have, if you were to click on Clubhouse over here, 
you can see all the different sessions that we are having, how it works, and all the upcoming sessions. So like the one today is romantic relationship. And we also have self-doubt, sex and intimacy, setting boundaries at work, women as a leader at workplace, and all these other sessions that are over here. And same thing, you can register to them through uh, event size and we'll update from time to time again. So do keep your eyes peeled on event size. And again, it is free 100 seats for everyone so that we can come and also be recorded. So we will be posting it on our website as well. Okay, so before I end my session, I want to thank Kogi for the session. Thank you so much for uh, answering all those all those difficult questions. And um, before and before everyone leave, could you all one more time go to Slido, the same link as just now, just to give us a quick feedback on what we can do to improve the session, and also what you think probably which part of the sessions where you find most interesting, or like whether Kogi managed to answer your questions well, or even anything that was not enough for you or you expected more. Just do put it in Slido again. It is anonymous, so don't be shy to. Type as long as you want. No one would know who, who is it. We just want to know which parts of it we can improve and which good parts we can maintain or make it even better. Okay. So um that will be the end of the session. No problem, Shavini. Yes. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us and thank you, Kogi, so much for the session as well. So I hope everyone had a good time and hope everyone learned a lot tonight. All right. So thank you everyone and see you all soon in our next session.